In the past two weeks, there's been a rapid influx, a hot potato reaction, you could say, in the US. Car manufacturers flocking from their bulky CCS charging ports to using the tiny and sleek charging connectors used by Tesla, known as NACs or North American Charging Standard. This is smart thinking by the likes of Ford, GM, Rivian, even Volvo, as now it will allow new owners to tap into the largest and most reliable EV charging network that until recently was completely exclusive to Tesla owners in the US only. My valuable experience about non-Tesla EV charging in the UK and Europe is coming because we have somewhat a similar situation here too. Not exactly, but very similar. Now, unless you hate competition and consumer choice, this is nothing short of fantastic news, as this will not only encourage new EV sales, but it will undoubtedly enable a better EV owning experience by being able to rely on the hyper-reliable Tesla supercharger network. However, before you rush and place a deposit on one of these newly announced NACs enabled non-Tesla EVs, because well, Tesla's charging advantage is no more, right? Sadly, you're mistaken. I hate to break it to you, yes, your charging experience will be better, but Tesla has and will retain supercharging advantages for the foreseeable future. This will mean owning the likes of a Tesla Model 3 or a Tesla Model Y and utilizing a Tesla supercharger will still deliver the pinnacle of the charging experience. Why is that, Adam? Well, as your fellow Brits from across the pond who has witnessed non-Tesla EVs already at some superchargers in the UK for over a year now, having happily scrolled through Twitter, I'm still wildly surprised that some of my friends from across the pond still haven't grasped that this news doesn't mean an equal experience from what you have and own with a Tesla. This isn't just about the pros of owning a Tesla. I fully understand and respect that these changes alone will still be significant to encourage sales for these newly announced non-Tesla EVs. My aim is not to discourage that, but as always, just to make sure that you are well informed ahead of making that buying decision because just one of these advantages could be a deal breaker for you and the Tesla may just tick all those boxes that you're after. So if this video sounds like an interesting insight, buckle up, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, finally hit the notification bell and once you've done that we can get into the nitty gritty details of it all. So kick starting the video, we need to understand why these traditional brands are jumping ship to Tesla's connector and why Tesla has welcomed them with open arms. Then I'll reveal just why Tesla will retain its superior charging experience over the alternatives before concluding why regardless of those advantages, some won't care about that, whereas for others, it's gonna be crucial. Since late 2022, the NAX charging connector was simply known as just the Tesla connector. But Tesla made the unselfish decision to change the name of the Tesla charging connector to NAX and fully open up its usage to allow other car manufacturers to use the same connector as Tesla in order to allow them onto the Tesla supercharger network. But why would Elon Musk and the Tesla team allow such an action? Tesla's mission since November 2013 is to accelerate the advent of sustainable transports by bringing compelling mass market electric cars to market as soon as possible. So to conclude this very point, at present in the US, Tesla vehicles actually outnumber CCS vehicles by 2 to 1 and have 60% more charging stations than CCS. It's not just car manufacturers jumping ship, but also other rapid charging station providers are now including NAX connectors for upcoming sites as manufacturers also jump across to use NAX. Maybe that's because there's now a financial incentive. On a product level, NAX has more charging stations, better reliability, and has unrivaled usability and reliability. It's vastly smaller, lightweight, and so it's ultimately more consumer friendly to use. Going back to the mission, it allows other users to access this experience and essentially all but guarantees a better charging experience through the availability of the chargers and the charging experience itself. So what about Tesla owners? Are they pissed off about this decision? Well, my experience from the non-Tesla EV charging at superchargers here in the UK comes into play here. Is there a reason to feel bitter about this? After all, the superchargers are about to become a hella busy, right? I mean, I can't talk for and exclusively on behalf of the event owners because we're all entitled to our own opinions on this. But if I was to make a generalization of the mood amongst owners, I think they're just concerned that the network will be overutilized and the demand for charging outstrips the supply of stations, leading to increased waiting times. This is a valid concern. However, we mustn't undermine Tesla because 
the amount of data Tesla holds in real time is simply insane and probably underestimated by most. They know exactly when the busiest time periods are and they know exactly which charging stations are in use and which ones are offline in real time. Tesla can use this data to their advantage and make changes to encourage demand during non-peak times over the peak times and they do this currently with lower and higher pricing incentives. The elephant in the room here is also simply more charging stations. If one supercharger site is busier than the other, then Tesla knows that there is a financial incentive to increase the charge account at a particular site or even just open up a new site locally. Data, data, data. Tesla knows it and can react quicker than the alternatives because of the real-time information that they currently have. Let's not forget, other charging providers will now allow Teslas to charge at their charging stations. And that's very much like so here in the UK, where we all have the same charging connector. And therefore, Tesla owners will pretty much be able to utilize any NACS compatible charging station in the future, even if it's not a supercharged station, because we all have the same connector. More infrastructure, more charging options, and so less waiting times are more options to utilize on your personalized route. Maybe being a Tesla owner during this period isn't so bad. Win, 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 right? Well, if a non-Tesla EV turns up at a compatible supercharger here in the UK, they do not experience the same advantages as a Tesla driver would at a supercharger. And this will be representative directly in the US too, when Snax is in full swing. What I mean by that is simply that Tesla charges non-Tesla EVs more in charging costs than a Tesla owner at a supercharger. Non-Tesla owners can purchase a monthly subscription to mitigate this pricing difference. However, Tesla owners will always have the upper hand on the prices charged per kilowatt hour. Something to take note of if you're considering a non-Tesla and you know that you will rely on the network heavily. There are other Tesla owner exclusive perks to be had. For example, the seamless plug and play that we currently have. No fumbling around a phone app or a screen to initiate the charging. It will work as soon as the cable hits the port. Tesla Model 3 and Model Y owners will just insert the cables and voila, it starts charging. Potentially one of the biggest and key differentiators will be the real time route planning and direct feed between Tesla navigation and the superchargers. Your car will know in real time if there is a less busier supercharger en route to ensure that you arrive at your destination in the quickest possible time. Only Teslas will have that software advantage and for those heavily reliant on the network this is going to be a massive time saver for sure. We mustn't forget that these are meaningful and convenient advantages and I know it's overlooked amongst some American consumers. And whilst other electric vehicles will have access to the network, they won't have access to these type of software features. Even preconditioning the battery is done automatically by Tesla to the supercharger to ensure the quickest charging session can be had and not all non-Tesla EVs will be able to do that. So why is this still a win-win situation for everyone? So to conclude why this is still a win-win situation for everyone involved, well, for Tesla owners, they will still have all these exclusive advantages, plus other rapid network providers outside Tesla will start allowing charging via their own NAX cable, essentially opening up their charging options and especially useful when there is little to no supercharging stations on their given route. There's also an incentive by these providers now, it's not just a Tesla connector. With Tesla, Rivian, Ford and GM taking on a connector and even more to follow, that there is the bulk of the US car market when it comes to EVs and the financial incentives to capture these EVs is bigger than ever before. Plus there will be financial incentive for Tesla to increase their own supercharging stations too because ultimately they're going to have more customers. Now it's not exclusively a Tesla and supercharger network. Final point is that increasing the charging stations is a win even for non-Tesla EVs because having NAX ensures a road trip has the most conveniently placed chargers to enable the quickest charging experience. Whilst non-Tesla EVs have access to the same hardware as Tesla EVs, they still don't have access to that software advantages and the pricing advantages that Tesla holds. And these will, at least in the near term, 
remain Tesla exclusive benefits. Regardless of that, consumers will still be happy knowing that they have access to the super reliable Tesla supercharger network. This has been successful here in the UK. And whilst not all superchargers here are open, it's very rare that a Tesla owner actually complains about a non Tesla EV on science via social media. And if they do, it's because of the charging location and lack of cable length to reach the non Tesla charging port. And this leads to blocking of another bay in some occasions, which is incredibly frustrating, as you can understand. However, with the introduction of the native NAX ports, this should hopefully be less of a problem if they ensure that the charging port is in the prime location to maximize the stations available. That or they increase the cable length. But either way, it should hopefully be less of a problem. Anyhow, I hope this video was useful. And now you know about Tesla's advantages that are still in play with the supercharger network. I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think this is a good idea by Tesla? Or ultimately, are you worried about queues or crowds at superchargers now? If you didn't know what to put, you can simply enter Tesla's free supercharging gift in the comment section to show me you got this far in the video and I'll give you a cheeky thumbs up for the support. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share the video with your friends and family. Otherwise, you folks have been great and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.